Welcome to module six. Uh, this is going to be the last module of this course. Uh, in the previous module, if you would recall, we talked about how the COVID-19 pandemic has made continental integration more of an urgency than ever before. We argued that deeper regional integration can help boost trade, build regional supply chains, foster regional self-sufficiency and food security. In short, the EFCFTA can support the post-COVID-19 recovery effort and help African countries build back better. In this module, we consider what it would take for the EFCFTA to work for Africa and to deliver the much promised development outcomes. In terms of the learning objectives, I would expect that by the end of this module, you would have a clearer understanding of the current status of implementation of the EFCFTA against the background of the pandemic. I would expect that you would be aware of the initiatives set up by the African Union and its partner organizations to support and monitor the implementation of the agreement. I would expect that you would be able to critically assess the policies and measures needed to make the EFCFT work. I would expect that you would understand the importance of national AFCFT strategies as complementary measures to make the most of the AFCFT. And finally, I would expect that you would be able to describe the AFCFTA's governance architecture and institutional arrangements, and in particular, appreciate the role of the AFCFTA national committees in the implementation of the agreement. Let us begin by reviewing what implementation of the AFCFTA agreement means. First, I have said it repeatedly. The AFCFTA was, was launched at the Niamey summit in July 2019 the trade protocol came into effect at the beginning of this year. Trade liberalization as per agreed schedules was expected to start on July 1st, 2020, but this was pushed back to January 1st, 2021 due to the pandemic. Countries other than the least developed countries. So we are here talking about the 21 developing countries uh, that have signed the agreement. These countries will liberalize 90% of the imports evenly over the next five years. The LDCs will have 10 years to do so. 7% of tariff lines have been designated as sensitive products with longer phase down periods, 13 years for LDCs and 10 years for non-LDCs. 3% of tariff lines, the remaining 3% of tariff lines are excluded from any tariff cut. Second, the negotiations, as we have said it repeatedly again, are far from complete. Phase two negotiations have been delayed, but even several issues from phase one remain to be resolved. The Niame Summit launched five complementary initiatives to support implementation of the AFCFT agreement. Product specific rules of origin covering 90% of tariff lines, an online NTB mechanism for monitoring and reporting non-tariff barriers, 
a pan-African digital payments platform, the so-called PUPS that we have come across before, which will allow traders to settle transactions in local currency, an online portal for tariff negotiations, and the AU trade observatory that will provide critical data to monitor goals and targets related to the EFCFTA implementation. In addition, the summit called on member countries to produce a checklist of obligations and steps taken to ensure effective implementation of the EFCFTA. Let us talk about the policies needed to make the EFCFTA work. The ARIA 9 report, recall ARIA 9 is the Assessing Regional Integration in Africa report, which is prepared by the ECA and its collaborators. And the ninth edition of that report provides a taxonomy of complementary measures to optimize the benefits of the EFCFTA. It does so through the lens of an export path as shown on the chart on this slide. The export pathway is broken down into five components, which are investment, production, export compliance, transport logistics, and import defense. Export compliance is fundamentally what we call trade facilitation. And uh, importation is all about import defense measures. Under each component, the report lists the complementary measures needed to effectively implement the EFCFT agreement. For example, under investment, these measures include the development of national investment plans, the setting up of investment promotion agencies where these are absent, and partnering with member countries to facilitate investment. These measures will likely be addressed in a future investment protocol. I encourage you to go carefully through this chart and take note of the complementary measures recommended in the other areas of the export pathway. In addition, member countries are encouraged to design AFCFTA national strategies that can leverage on the complementary measures mentioned in the previous slide. Such strategies can serve several important purposes. For example, they can help identify sectors of comparative advantage, trade opportunities, current constraints and emerging challenges. They can also help inform policies and complementary measures needed to take full advantage of the EFCFTA. The ARIA 9 report describes eight key elements of an EFCFTA national strategy. These include, amongst others, a situational analysis, a SWOT analysis, a strategic objectives, action plan, and monitoring and evaluation frameworks, and a com communication plan. There are several issues that are not strictly trade related, but are cross-cutting, such as gender equality, environment, and climate change. These issues should receive due attention in AFCFTA national strategies. I can't emphasize it enough. A participat 
participatory and inclusive approach to the development and implementation of AFCFTA national strategies is critical to their success. This means that such strategies should be developed in consultation with all relevant stakeholders, including the private sector and civil society organizations. This will ensure greater ownership of the national strategies and create momentum for the effective implementation of the EFCFTA agreement. Finally, it is important that the AFCFTA Secretariat and the African Union ensure that the pandemic does not permanently distract member countries from designing and implementing AFCFTA national strategies. The architects of the AFCFTA have made conscious efforts to ensure that the agreement is implemented to the fullest extent. To that end, they have provided for an AFCFTA institutional framework to oversee the AFCFTA and more generally, the continental integration process. The AFCFTA institutional framework sets out the organizational structure and lines of reporting as shown in the chart on this slide here. Again, this comes from the ARIA 9 report. The AU Assembly acts as the oversight body it provides political and strategic guidance. The Council of Ministers is actually the main decision-making institution for the AFCFTA. It is mandated to establish and supervise the AFCFTA Secretariat and attendant committees and subcommittees, which themselves fall under the purview of the Committee of Senior Trade Officials. I urge you to study this organigram and take note of the various committees and subcommittees and the reporting lines. And now to the last slide. The AFCFTA institutional framework and the AFCFTA agreement explicitly call on member countries to set up an AFCFTA national committee, which would help in the effective implementation of the agreement. The national committee should ideally be created by the Ministry of Trade as part of the country's AFCFTA national strategy. It should be inclusive in its composition and organized into specialized teams according to expertise or interests. A key responsibility of the national committee should be to implement the AFCFTA national strategy as we discussed in the previous slide. The committee can propose concrete steps to take advantage of the opportunities created by the AFCFTA and recommend measures to mitigate any adverse impacts arising from implementation. So here we are. We have come to the end of this module. It's been a long journey. I hope you learned something from this course. The journey of the AFCFTA, on the other hand, has just started. And now that you are un enlightened, I must say, and I hope you are, I hope you will be able to bring your share to make the AFCFTA work for your country in the first place, 
but for the uh, continent as a whole, uh, uh, more importantly. As I said at the start of this course, I see every learner, every one of you as an ambassador for the EFCFTA. So I hope you will be able to share your knowledge with your peers and help build momentum for the EFCFTA. So thank you for bearing with me for, for throughout this course. It's been uh, six weeks now. Um, I hope you complete the course. I understand some extra time will be provided. Please do take the final assessment. It's important that you take and pass the final assessment for you to be awarded a certificate. And I do hope you earn your certificate. It's well deserved. Thank you and good luck.